Love this podcast? Support it and sponsor today. Simply head to OzCastNetwork.com for details. Love on Campus acknowledges that we meet on the traditional lands of the Ghana people of the Adelaide Plains. We recognise and respect their cultural heritage and beliefs and relationship with this land. We acknowledge that these lands are of continuing importance to the Ghana people living today and we extend that respect to other Aboriginal language groups and other First Nations people. Hello, welcome back to Love on Campus. I'm Dr Amy Matthews and I am here on campus to talk about love with Georgia Nichols. <laughs> Hello. And Kathleen Stanley. Hello. I like that here on campus to talk about love. <laughs> yeah. We are actually doing what we say. Yeah. <laughs> um, so today we're going to look at one of um, the most popular tropes at the moment. I feel like it's popping up everywhere. Mm, yeah. Um, and as I'm thinking, I'm, they're not just books but film and TV as well. Yeah. And that is the fake relationship. Yes. Do you guys well, like who? a fake relationship? Apparently. I do. I think I do. Yeah. I actually, I went, I looked them up before this episode right? and I was like, oh, I've read quite a few of these. I know. I was looking <laughs> at my bookshelf yesterday because I was like, oh, we're going to be talking about fake relationships today. Like, what books do I like? And I was like, mm. wait, what, how many of these are not fake relationships? <laughs> I was like, oh, there's a lot here. Like, I didn't realise how much I was into it All right, so the ones I've written down mm, are yeah. Christina Lauren, The Unhoneymooners, yes. mm-hmm. which we talked about last episode. Um, I haven't read it yet, but Alana Armas' um, Spanish Love Deception, mm-hmm. which is just in my feed all the time. I have taught Helen Huang's The Kiss Quotient mm-hmm. um, a Good few one. times. There's A Witch's Guide to Fake Dating, um, yep. The Dating Dare by J.C. Lee. Um, the Duke and I. Yeah, Julia Quinn, so mm. the first season of Bridgerton. Um, there is Love Theoretically by our friend Ali Hazelwood. Yes. But then also film, you've got – so there's Bridgerton, but you've also got The Proposal with Sandra Bullock. And yes. um, yeah. even Pretty Woman is a fake yeah. dating thing. Yes. Yeah. Yes, there's quite yeah. a lot. That's a lot. Oh, now oh, God, I, I love that movie. <laughs> yeah. I love The Proposal. The I think it's almost a great one. perfect. Yeah, um, it is. So what's the pleasure of the fake relationship? I think it's – well, because most of the time it sort of is played into with – enemies to lovers or people who wouldn't really be in a circumstance together. Yeah. And you have to watch them navigate it and see how they work. I don't know. I feel like it's also the stakes are different. Yeah. Does that make sense? Like there's Mm. this like trialling it out and it's really like interesting because it's like, oh, what are the stakes here? Like the stakes are more like are they actually going to fall in love whilst they're already acting out that they're in love so you don't. Yeah. It's just interesting like the – um, how to lose a guy in ten days? Oh, oh, yeah, oh that's a good one. Did I say that right? Yeah, that's right. How to lose? Yeah, a guy how to lose a guy in ten days. That's technically a fake relationship. It is. Yeah, oh, for both of them. They're Except, both doing yeah, it. Yeah, they're both doing it, but they they think that the other person does not think it's fake. Yeah. So that's kind of fun. So I think what's in, so there's, I reckon there's a couple of different subtypes. One mm. is the person who is not good at relationships, right? Like Pretty Woman or the Kiss Quotient. Yeah, or like the. They're like a bit of a player, but they need, yeah, you, yeah, or a bit like of instructional in, almost. Yeah, because mm. like in Pretty Woman and Kiss Quotient is a reverse Pretty Woman. Mm. Um, he he is no good at attending to someone's emotional needs. He's transactional. He just wants them there to be on his arm and be a hostess. Yes. So she mm. just fulfills that role, and then of course he learns how to be emotionally open to someone. And then in um, the Kiss Quotient. It's about she has um, ASD, so autism spectrum disorder, and she finds sex very awkward and uncomfortable and overwhelming and relationships overwhelming. Mm -hmm. And so she hires him to teach her how to enjoy sex Mm. and they end up in this kind of fake relationship that deepens. Yeah, loved that book. I loved the kiss question. It was one of my favourites. There's something there about having to learn the skills to be a good partner. Yeah, I yeah, the testing thing, maybe the the. I don't even know. I. It's a really interesting one though, because there's a transactional nature to that relationship that has a power dynamic in it. Yeah, yeah. And there's sort of like because that's only one element of fake dating. Like there's yeah, yeah, also yeah. the, um, like one of the fake dating is a really common again in Christmas romances because it's often the um. I don't want to go back oh, to my yeah, family yeah, for yeah, Christmas, yeah, yeah. so they yeah. ask somebody to be there 
boyfriend or yeah, girlfriend. Yeah, so that would be the second type I was thinking of. And I of would also throw weddings in there as well. Mm. So yes. Christmas, yes. weddings, yeah. anytime you've got to go back to a family. Or oh, high school reunions is another one. Yeah. Yes. The Dating Plan by Sarah Desai, that's, I, I really like that mm. book. And that is that this that fits in this category where she asks um, this guy she runs into to pretend to be her fiancé to – I can't remember originally why they – it's just like a spur of the moment thing, like I think to get rid of an ex or to throw off an ex. And then her aunties over here – she's Indian yeah. – and her aunties over here it, and they end up having to like fake this full thing mm. because she doesn't want to tell them that she isn't because they get so excited and it like works out that they're going to they're gonna do it for so long to, it gets them off her back because they're trying to marry yeah. her off all the time. And it sort of gets them off their ba- her back and like they have a past together and blah, 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 blah. But it's sort of like – there's a transactional there of it benefits me and it benefits him for some reason, which I can't remember why now because it's been a while <laughs> since I read it. But there's like that idea of um, – but they were sort of like known each other from high school and hadn't seen each other for years. Is but that sometimes like a second chance it. or a friends to lovers? I would a- say second chance. Yes. Yeah. Um, but I think friends to lovers is a really common version of that. Mm. So, so far what we've got is like this – this one where you hire someone or to help you engage someone yeah. to help you do something. Mm. And then you've got this going home to the family in some form and uh, this idea of, I guess, public face, like of not yeah. wanting to be yeah. the single mm-hmm. person. And then so far we've got like friends to lovers and second chance. It's also doing forced proximity if you do this, right? Mm. Yeah. So it's doing a lot of things. Sure. Yeah. And then there's also the ones that I think that have like a slightly different edge to them that are perhaps um, career based. So like yep. the ex talk is career based, and the proposal mm. I would say is almost yeah. career yes. based, yep. right? Yeah. So the the idea of exes that also comes up a bit. I think I can mm. think of some films and TV shows I've seen where exes pretend to still be together. Yeah. That's like we, the, like, that's yeah. the premise of Happy Place, <laughs> our book club as well. Like, not not to save face, but to like save themselves from explanation and I don't know. I think usually to, to protect themselves from the hurt of having to admit it's over but saying that it's to protect everyone yeah. else in their lives mm. from the hurt of them being broken up. Mm. Yeah? Yeah. Well, in The Spanish Love Deception, if I'm remembering it correctly, she wants to take someone back with her because she had quite a scandalous relationship with – I want to say it's like an ex-professor or something like that or someone a lot older than her and he was going to be at the wedding. And so the idea was that it was there. She has like an overbearing family who yeah. want her to be with someone but also this idea of saving face and yeah, like protecting. And That's interesting know. where it's going back, like you said, Kathleen, to the proposal. Mm. Yeah. That is – very career based. They're both in it for to get something out of it. Like she needs yeah. she needs the, the green card. Yeah. <laughs> so oh, yeah. to keep her job and he wants mm. to be an editor. Mm. Yes. It's so. there's a transaction there of um mutual Yeah. And if they don't, it'll be mutual self destruction because he won't be able to become an editor and she won't be able to stay. And, and then work. you've got um, enemies to lovers there too, because actually they can't stand each other. And they're grumpy. Yeah. And they're grumpy sunshine. I they think. Are. Yes, I'm like, true. I have, a, I have oh a full God. argument for next month that, that the proposal is grumpy <laughs> sunshine. I yeah, fake really uh, the enemies to lovers thing in fake relationship. I think I love, like I particularly enjoy. And there's so much comedy, I think, in the fact that no one knows they're not together. Yeah, yeah. Like the the their reality doesn't match everyone else's reality. But that's yeah. where like shared beds come in. Like shared beds, people <laughs> people love. Like that's in the proposal where like yeah. he's sleeping on the floor yeah. and she and that naked scene. Where yeah, that naked scene. scene. Naked scene. scene. Other, like that's like that's so much more fun because they're like kind of enemies. Like they do hate each other. That naked scene, I almost <laughs> choked on a corn chip <laughs> on a pl- on a flight. I was flying to Buffalo from. Uh, New York or going to <laughs> Niagara Falls and I was watching the proposal on the plane and it's mm-hmm. the first time I'd ever seen it and that naked scene I li- like you know when the plane is dead quiet because yeah. everyone's doing their own <laughs> thing and that one person is like ah! <laughs> that was me but I had a corn chip at the same time so not only was I laughing but I started choking at the exact same time. So what I find really so interesting about the fake relationship is that it's a farce like it's so heightened and unrealistic mm. and it's like old farces like it sets up these scenes that are kind of 
would never happen in real life. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah. Like the plots are like they're, no they're crazy really, sauce. No one's really ever faking a relationship, are they? Do people do that for real? I there must be there some. Must be. People do everything, but it wouldn't be an everyday thing. No. Not. Yeah, not yeah, as see, much as we're reading about. <laughs> yeah, I was like, no, sure. not at the not at the rate rom coms yeah. spurted out. But I, I would. Oh man, I wish that this was a real radio show where people could call in. Yeah, please call in. <laughs> <and tell laughs> fake dating well, like, Oh the, man, I really I was, want them. Yeah, I keep thinking about other ones like the love hypothesis. Um, she fakes dates to get either because her friend likes someone that her friend thinks she can't date because of her, because Olive used to date him briefly or something like that. So she does it for her friend, which was an interesting. Yeah. They're often play on quite it. flimsy setups. I yeah, think. yeah. And I think like in the Spanish love deception, there's no reason he's doing it. Like he's just kind of doing it because he's always had a crush on her. Is the explanation later on? Oh, and what's that? Oh, it just made me think of that teen movie with um, Freddie Prince Jr. and oh, Rachel really? Lee Cook. She's all that. She's all that. Yeah. Where she thinks they're real dating and he's doing <gasps> it for yeah. a bet. Ten things I hate about you is oh, yes. also good. <laughs> the bet that is kind of like another version of yeah. fake dating, well, the, the isn't half it? Fake but only bet half. half. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, one person is fake dating and one takes it seriously. Yeah, yeah. I mean we should be saving this stuff because we are doing the We're bet later on, guys. Well, actually. if you come to like the point of ritual death with. The fake relationship. You've got if there's only the half fake relationship, part of the point of ritual death is they find out that the other person has been faking it the entire yeah. time. That's so an easy that would be such an easy yeah, right. That's a really easy <laughs> Whereas, what's the point of ritual death for a fake relationship that you, like the ones you read? Um I, I think remember. a lot of the time it's like the fact, like depending on what ones it is. So if it's the friends to lovers one. They have to keep saying, no, we're friends, we're friends, we're friends. We don't yeah, ruin the friendship. Uh, yeah, it's like no, that realisation yeah. that I've actually fallen in love with my friend now for yeah. real. Yeah. Or there's and like how do the, I... the narrative where they're like, no, that other person's just faking it. We're both faking it. What they're doing can't be real. And it's basically just miscommunication the entire time. Neither of them speaking out that it's not fake and that they actually... I think that when might they be f- why you know, I like fake yeah. relationship ones because I think that's the most believable to me of why they don't communicate properly. Because they have Im- it, like they've got an agreement from the beginning people. that it's yeah. not real. Yeah. So when you've suddenly caught feelings, you are thinking the and the other person's showing you that they have feelings for you too. It can't showing doesn't work anymore. You have mm. to talk. Oh yes, yeah, so you, true. You have to talk. And and the thing is, is that when you're like, oh no no no, we had an agreement. Then yeah. you 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 can't read the signs like you are misunderstanding them constantly, yeah. and it's the only time I give them a real break and go. Of course, you didn't speak up mm. because you're like, I have I even really fallen in love with this person? Like, or is it just because it's fake? Like, there's also mm. that twist. Did you see that Christmas movie with Kristen Stewart? Um, yes. What's yep. it called? Um, oh, oh, mental. Happiest blank. season. Yes. Yeah. Happiest it. season. That's a fake not dating story. Where they're yeah. Yeah. not a couple. So you can, I guess, invert yeah, it as well. Yeah, you can. Well, I was thinking about in the love hypothesis, they have sex and she's like, but it was all just um, fake relationships. Fake sex. Fake <laughs> sex. We <laughs> were just that, doing it that, because we're that in makes this. makes no sense to me. We might as well. <laughs> anyway, and then he gets hurt. He's like, you seriously think we would have had sex and I would have had sex with you oh, if it was ouch. really just fake. But also, yeah, not 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 like he, I know what you mean. I, yeah, yeah. where he's like, I would never have done that if I if what I was kind really of committed person to this do being you think I am. Yeah, like every this. male on the planet. No, sorry, <laughs> that's not true. No, he's, yeah, and so he gets hurt. He's like, well, yeah, we were doing the f- other fake stuff, but the second it got to sex, like that wasn't I wasn't faking. I it. take like, sex seriously. Like, it's not yeah. your emotions. <laughs> no, oh, ick. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's well, actually really problematic, isn't it? Because it's a real lack of awareness there of like. The way women mm. have been conditioned and the way men what have been conditioned. What makes a relationship serious is the fact that you then have sex. The and cons- the consummation of yeah. that. And the idea that, um, like, it is actually believable, the idea that, like, with hookup culture and all, and things like that, that women constantly believe that men are just having sex with them because that's it. Convenient or some sort of... Because yeah. we're told we're told constantly that that's just how men view women, and look, a lot of them do. Um, and so I suppose that's sort of where Olive goes. In the yeah, at she first goes, I was thinking, well, how well, could she think that? Like, <laughs> but maybe it is just yeah. convenient, and we may as well take advantage of the situation. And he goes, "Well, no, I'm not taking advantage of it. I 
like you and that's why I did it. Do you think the fantasy is partly about how there are always these people who are slightly out of reach to us and we think, well, if they were forced to pretend to be my partner for a while, they might suddenly go, oh, yes, I love you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Yeah. like they have to be in proximity to you. (laughs) Yeah, maybe it's a self-esteem like If they could get to know me, I think they'd really like me. Yeah, Harry (laughs) Styles. Yeah. Yeah, Harry well, Styles would love me. I know. <laughs> the only thing he we, I think we know it for a fact. I think if Harry met you, he'd be smitten. Yeah. <laughs> the only thing keeping us apart is the fact that he is very super mega famous. And that's it. Yeah. And he lives, he lives too far <laughs> can away. I be, yeah. Can I be controversial here, Georgia? I think you can do better. <laughs> <laughs> I think I can do better too. That's yeah. why I'm saying he would definitely like me. Like, Don't get me wrong. I like is, Harry Styles and all, but I think get. you can do better. <laughs> I, I think can this do better. is interesting. So are there any stories that you can think of with a fake dating thing where she doesn't end up with the guy she's fake dating? She ends up with another guy. Ooh, that would a be a good plot. She's fake dating to get away from the other person but Ooh. ends up back with them anyway. Oh. I actually have a romance that I want, <laughs> that I want to write. That's yeah, this. You want to write that? Like, that's yeah. This, to an extent. To an extent. Like I think one that, of that my, would be interesting. Yeah, I do have a plot. Like, And I did talk about it at RWA and this, is, this was, uh, you know, I've been told I should write it. It's just like growing that third set of arms. Oh, yeah, to do the extra mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> But I have, I'm like, I've had a plot for this, but I don't know if I've read it. You're, you're faking a relationship with your husband that you hate and you're getting a divorce, but you can't get a divorce just yet and you fall in love with someone else. But they think they can't be with you because you you're in a fake relationship. Have you ever seen the film from the 80s called Green Card? It's got Andy McDowell and Gerard Depardieu. No. Yeah, that's a that's a fake marriage one mm. where she needs she wants this. She's a like a, a horticulturalist, <laughs> and she wants this apartment in New York that has this giant roof garden. But they will only rent like sell the condo to someone who's married, and he needs a green card. Oh. And then they kind of live together. And then well, it, 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 sorry to spoil the ending, but he gets tossed out of the country, right? And then they realize they love each other. Oh. So they still end up together, though. Well, yeah, there's the possibility they will because oh. she – so it has the airport oh, scene. Really it has this kind of airport scene where they declare their love and then he's deported and they're going to have this long-distance thing oh, and see Such a movie happen. cop out for this. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Movies do this all the bloody time. Cop out to not be called a romance. It's honestly like it's my – I'm going to be writing about this in my PhD about how Hallmark do this. Hallmark do mm. this all the time where they do not solve the problem but the couple still are like, I love you and they kiss and the snow comes down. And It'll I'm like, be fine, we'll work it out. Yeah, somehow. I'm literally I'm like, yeah. how? And like, tell like, me more. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, no, guys, you would never get away with this shit yeah. in a book. <laughs> like, a romance reader would throw the book across the room mm. and be like, lies. Yeah. Solve it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm like, how hard would it have been to solve this? But well, I, I guess it can be hard because you could reinforce something and they're trying to avoid yeah. doing that. I was going to talk about Happy Place, our book club, but I don't want to do it Next yet. Next week. I know. <laughs> I, know. Um, oh, I, I keep got a good example. Well. <laughs> I was just wondering about when you were talking about some of the – I was thinking about some of the movies from the 90s because a fake relationship makes me think a little bit of um, like the the tr- love triangle. Yeah. And I was like, mm-hmm. I wonder if some of those might play with this idea and I'm trying to think of the name of them now. To All the Boys I Loved Before is kind of a love triangle. Um, Ooh, not a 90s one, but – yeah, no, but I was like, there's this, there's like an old one with Ben Stiller and Owen Wilson and Jenna Elfman, and it's like, oh, oh I know, keeping the, one. the faith or something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. No, that's um, not Owen Wilson. That's Edward Norton. Ah, oh, yes. Yep. Yes. That's a really good film, actually. Yeah, and I'm like, I can't remember though if there's some fake dating in that or not. But I, I feel like you know, movies like that where there's that love triangle, mm. um, and it's sort of like that. That might not quite fit here, but it makes me think of a little bit along those lines where there's another one, The Very Thought of You, I think it's called, with Josephians, and I think there's multiple men in that as well. And it's sort of like what one will she end up with, but there is date. I think some of them, though, she's just multiple dating. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, it's not really faking, but that that kind of idea does remind me a little bit of that. That seems to be where I think that might happen. Yeah. They, are, they do seem to me to be kind of cartoonish, larger-than-life stories, these ones. Yes. Yeah. Um, and I think you could maybe motivate it better in historical fiction. Um, yeah. Well, like marriages of convenience. Yeah, are really are common like, in the Regency yeah, or, and, like and other really things. Yeah, really close to fake relationships. Yeah. There's a couple. Tessa Dare, I think, does. There's a, one of her ca- Castles Ever After one does a I fake love Tessa dating. Dare. Me too. I'm trying to think of the one. I think it's like where well, there's a governess. Yeah. Well, The Duke and I does it the first season of 
Yeah, Christian. because yeah. he doesn't want to get married and he wants them all to leave him alone and yeah. she's been disgraced and needs to lift her reputation. Yeah, and yeah. he goes, well. But okay. that seems well motivated to me. Like yeah, once you get to history, it, even though it is still cartoonish and larger than life. Whereas like I suppose like bringing someone – to your f- a wedding or something because you don't want to be the single one. Is a l- nowadays you're a little it bit. It makes like, you seem a little sad. Yeah, it's a little bit like <laughs> you're like you're like, pl- like why do you have to be? Why, what's so wrong with being single? Like you'll be fine. I don't know. Like it, it's hard. It makes more sense in with that when there's more structural motivation, if you will. Yeah, yeah. which is why the proposal works. I think because yeah, that like seems green cards. well motivated. Yeah. Exactly. There's, there's a wedding one too, actually, that I'm just thinking about with Deborah Messing, like the wedding date or something where she hires somebody. Oh, I've heard of it. I haven't seen it. Yeah, she hires somebody to be her date then yep, as that well. that beautiful man. Um, what's his name? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we love what's his it's name. It's not Patrick Dempsey. Um, it's a – But it, he reminds me of him. Is it uh, – He was also – I've got it right here. He's in My Best Friend's Wedding, isn't he? Yeah. It's, Gosh, um, he's, he is kind of beautiful. Dermot Mulroney. Yeah. <laughs> he is beautiful. He was also a new girl. Great night. <laughs> new girl, Sorry, great. I think I have a bit of a thing for like men who are in 90s rom-coms and stuff oh, like that. Oh, doesn't? <laughs> like, it's they, totally fine. Yeah. <laughs> Which is ironic because that was before I was born. Are you enjoying the Chris Pine like revival? <gasps> I've always loved Chris Pine. Yeah, he's a cutie. Always. I like Chris Pine. Princess what Diaries Chris Pine. Oh, why you <laughs> why you're sleeping is a fake dating where one of them is an unconscious. Oh, that one's great. Yeah, that's <laughs> a really good fake oh my gosh, dating. I love <laughs> while you were sleeping. Me too, best Christmas movie. So oh, good. it's good. Oh, the proposal scene. Oh, so good. So, <laughs> good. but the way uh, every step of the way, every time she's about to come clean. Yeah, something, something happens with wrong. the family. Anne yeah, Gracie, that's good. Yeah. The Regency author, Anne Gracie, if you haven't read her, go out and read her. She um, does this amazing workshop, writing workshop for romance where she uses sleep uh, while you're sleeping and breaks it down according to a romance structure. It's so good. Lots of pinch points as we were talking yeah, about. Yeah, and so lots of moments yeah. where you are totally sympathetic as to why she doesn't She wouldn't do pain. it. Yeah, it, and it just characterises uh, her as a really lovely person. I know, and it ramps up <laughs> every she time. She can't it gets let worse. this family down yeah, she's yeah. like she's like okay guess i'm marrying this guy like like she yeah it's and it great. gets worse and worse and worse for her i know, her. <laughs> I know. So it's good. so cute it's been and a while yeah. since i've watched it oh which is God, why i'm not so and just good. great chemistry between i sandra do remember bullock and bill pullman yeah, yeah. so good yeah. i do i like sandra bullock <laughs> i think she's, she's great done yeah. so yeah. many rom-coms yeah, like really she is. i i underestimate how many she's actually done yeah and she um actually has produced a lot of them. Yeah. Go her. Yeah. yeah she's a very powerhousey kind of. Yeah. I like Reese Witherspoon too. I'm like, she's yep. kind of mm. another one of those. Also produced a lot of her own. What about, um, there is, which, Reese Witherspoon was in the one about the divorce couple that do the four holidays or whatever. Is that a fake dating yeah, thing? Yeah, four holidays. They, no, they are dating. They're still they together are. then. They break up at the end. Spoiler alert. Oh, yes. No, they get back together. I don't know. I think it's dark. They're like, yeah, they're like arguing or something like that. They're, they I do end up back together. Do they? they do. It felt yes. really dark. Isn't it because their parents are... Um, so they avoid... They go away on holiday and lie to their families yeah, every right. year. Yeah. And then they get caught out by a news program that catches them at the airport. That's right. And their families will call them. And so they have to go and see all... Yeah, they're they're both from divorced families. homes. Yeah. That's right. And they do end up breaking up at one point. And I think it's uh, – there's a vulnerability she has where she thinks she might be pregnant. Yeah. And – I remember not loving it. I didn't love the end. No, I actually don't like hit. him. I don't like him yeah, as a rom-com like guy. I think he's an asshole. <laughs> well, that's, a, <laughs> that's what he plays. What? But like, rom-com uh, guys are so important. Like the yeah. rom-com yeah. Is so important. Like, and I don't feel like there are any rom-com – people anymore i have people in mind that i would love yeah. to become rom-com actors you need actors. a lot of charm glenn is, powell who's that yeah no glenn i think powell, he's, he's he was he's just spe- in top gun the new one. Oh right okay yeah um, yeah set it up and set it up oh uh, he would be good zoe deutsch who she's a rom-com girl she's a rom-com sure. girl like i want i want my i want my kate <laughs> hudson detouring this i want they, my sandra bullock's back so they get um <laughs> They get Sorry, they enjoy. get the leads wrong when they make them pretty without like the charm and warmth and you want to yeah. identify with it, not yeah. bang her. Yeah. yeah, I think too a lot of people. I mean, I think romance has gone through a real hard time in the film industry where 
um, people didn't want to get put in that box. Yeah, they think that it's bad to be the rom com person. Yeah. Where it's like, oh, it got quite like, bro. No, yeah, like, it be, did. I, it makes me sad that people think that being the rom com person is sad. Like, Austin Butler's kind of an excuse of it recently. He was often cast as like the, the, the boyfriend, romantic lead, and he hated it. Like, he took this Elvis thing and was like, I'm now doing serious work. And it's like, bro, like, you were you were doing You were hot and before. now you're a douche. Yeah, yeah. like, <laughs> now you can't get rid of the it's Elvis accent. It's a bit accent. like um, when Meg Ryan stepped away and it's like, oh, mm. don't, because we love Matthew you. Matthew McConaughey does, it. like, he was such a rom-com person and then he was like, I wanted to get more serious and get into serious work. And it's like, what, like, why? You were so successful. Because like, I want to appeal to yeah, men, like, not women. <laughs> I mean, for one, you don't need to put down the romances that you have done. Yeah, exactly. And like you can do both, but there's no need to see them as stepping stones. Like they're just as valid. Sorry, we've got a little bit up. No, topic. but like that's like people like how Robert Pattinson was all like, I can't do anything now because the Twilight's ruined my life. And now he loves I don't want to do franchise. I don't want to be this. Leo, and then he tried to Leo, do all those things. Leo and then DiCaprio he did Batman. Yeah. What the hell? He loves Twilight now. He was well, quite good in Batman, I thought. <laughs> but I think he's great in Batman. He was probably one of my favorite Batmans. But it was the it's the it's the double standard. Like, oh, it was okay to do Batman as a franchise and be yeah. that. But oh, but being a manly. Yeah, but twihards and the girls all like him. What a he's horrible! Like, that would have been a pretty him. intense experience, I imagine. Yeah. Oh yeah, no. Like well, watching <laughs> Leo DiCaprio after Titanic, yeah. it would have been pretty hellish. Yeah, he, for sure, for sure. Robert Pattinson strangely <laughs> really likes Twilight now. He like has enjoyed. This sort of resurgence in interest in it. Is there any fake dating in Twilight? Oh no, they're pretty quick into the relationship. <laughs> I mean, in pretty some in some senses, I wonder time. how much the relationship in real life that celebrities had. Like, I wonder how much how long Arpats and um, Kristen Stewart were <gasps> fake dating after. I like, know. you know what I mean? Like, when I think I know they were together, but I reckon they had to fake so much of that for the fandom because yeah. she literally had to come out with that other director and be yeah. cheating in order to break the spell. Yeah. Do you know what fake dating, if it does ever occur <laughs> in real life, is occurring in PR scenarios? Yeah, it's PR. Totally. That Big time. So you can tell, well, I saw one and I haven't read it and I've lost it now. There's I'm one in Hollywood at the moment that's just come out that is that kind of thing. And I think oh, that like a movie or like a, like a, a couple, couple that were promoting? Yeah. Or, oh. A book that is oh, about yeah. that, the Hollywood something. Let me look for it. But um, I was like, that one I would believe. Yeah, that also makes sense because it's sort of like a trick of the trade to do your little PR relationship. Talk amongst yourselves. Yeah, like definitely. Google. Like, it's like this thing of, oh, oh. It's called How to Fake It in Hollywood by Ava Wilder. Oh, yes, I've heard that one. I've heard, heard of that one. one. Yeah, so that I think is less cartoony and way more believable. Yeah, it makes sense. Um, like Harry Styles and Olivia Wilde. So the tagline is a star is born meets beach read. <laughs> a star is born meets beach read. <laughs> yeah. uh, that feels very I feel like we have to read this book. <laughs> yeah, I'm very interested. <laughs> oh god, yeah, fake dating in like its celebrity circles would be interesting. I wonder if like fake dating. Seven hus- husbands of Evelyn Hugo. <laughs> How many? A couple of those are fake. Yes. <laughs> yes, but that's a big spoiler to reveal why. But I also feel yeah, like that book's old. Yeah, we really well, that book's why. old enough now that you probably yeah, could. Come on. But it was on we, the bestseller list for like four years. Or yeah, yeah, I was like, I feel like one part of me goes, mm, if you I haven't think, read it by now. People do, I think, enjoy fake dating in that in the sort of Hollywood scenario. Do you yeah. think the payoff is hard to maintain though? Like thinking about going through the black moment, and because the black moment is always when you have to acknowledge how whether it's real or fake, mm. or when they're outed, they're usually outed to everyone. Yeah. Um, but then, how do you wrap it up? Because I'm thinking mostly when I think of things like. The proposal has a disappointing last bit, I think. Like I think Oh in the street. Yeah, I just I think it's okay, but it's a little bit I think when he goes back to the office, the final final ending, that's great. But the mm. stuff around the wedding was a little bit like, okay, a bit predictable. Like I think mm. it's hard to wrap up because it is so cartoony and larger than life. Um Yeah. Yeah, I guess. Can you think I of think good that examples you maybe of have like I think you need to have the emotional tie in it. We're talking a lot about the internal emotional journey today. Um, this week, this week, this month, this, this month. <laughs> yeah, this, <laughs> this, this is sometime week. in this general vicinity. <laughs> <laughs> like I think that it has to make sense for each character. Strangely, I know that that's probably really pathetic. And a bit can of you now. think of it like what's a fake dating book where you were like that nailed the ending? That's so good. Oh, I feel like this. I'm not good at this because I don't have this issue like I think I go into romance knowing we're gonna like I'm fine with it 
if yeah. that's what we have, like that's okay. Mm-hmm. That's fine. Like endings are so hard and when you know that it has to be there. Like this is why people under like underestimate romance all the time and being a, a romance writer because you don't really have a choice. Like you've got a contract with your reader of, of yeah. what you need to give them. Yeah. And there's only so many ways you can do that. And I actually don't think some of them are as bad or cheesy or um, whatever word you want to use there. I think that society's reflection on that. Right. That's how I feel. Mm. Like I think if I just am in my little bubble – reading and not thinking about anything else, I really friggin' enjoy it. And I don't care if it's cheesy or if it's a little bit lame or if it's a little bit whatever because why does it need to be over the top or why does it need to be this? Like, it's just nice. Like, they've worked it out. But I do think that we're being told all the time that there's something a little bit lame about it. Yeah, I get bored with some of them. Like, I think maybe what I want is an excess of charm. Yeah. I want to, I want to be smiling like I yeah. just want it to be so charming you that be I can't cuz I do think the final scene of the proposal does it for me like mm. where she turns up at the office or he turns up at the office mm. and that actually does make you a little bit like teary because she has to be vulnerable in front of all these people and it's that thing of linking yeah. the ending back to the beginning. I like the credit scenes in the proposal. That's really <laughs> horrible where they like s- finally actually know everything about each other. <laughs> that I think is nice. It's just like a little epilogue. Um, I think the kiss question, not that I remember how it ends or how they resolve things, but I know that I really liked it. Yeah. Because I'm trying to think off the top of my head, I can't think of one, but I know I actually, there are moments where you do that little like squee thing of yeah. like, that was such a good ending. Yeah, uh, like an airport scene. Oh, it's an airport. <laughs> There's just something about being in public maybe where you have to declare it. Public Ooh. revelations are pretty great. Yeah, yeah. public is good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Come what on, be friends, vulnerable. About, Everyone see it. That's a 90s thing. With benefits. Is friends with benefits kind of a fake relationship no that's it's not that's gonna be something else. that's friends with benefits <laughs> <laughs> i know because i was gonna be like that's friends to lovers that's a pretty public declaration at the end that he does but yeah there's something about having to be vulnerable in public about something that you would there previously is something not about all public, vulnerable about because the um bridgerton ends with you know the dance yeah, outside the big where everyone scene. leaves yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. i I'll, I'll be controversial here don't love season one of bridgerton and don't love Simon Hastings right. as a character. Mm. I prefer the season, season two, two hero and heroine. And so I had a I had trouble in that first season being like, yeah, I love that they have to spend time together because I was a bit like, he kind of sucks. So it, I don't he know. He was quite grumpy, wasn't he? He was just a bit, <laughs> yeah, and there was just a bit of an arrogance to him that I was like, it's not like a charming arrogance; it's just an annoying one. And so. I had trouble with that. It was interesting because as they evolved through through the different films, like the, the foregrounding, the vulnerability of mm. the hero. But then I wonder if it's complicated by race here too because yeah. there's a loading that comes with his kind of masculinity and and, yes. and yeah, the way definitely. people are already reading him as a character. Yeah, which yeah. is why I don't like often saying that I didn't enjoy it because oh, I worry that there's fine. like misinterpretations <laughs> of maybe why his character was It wasn't. was also hypersexual, their relationship, right? Yeah, like super based in that. And his like wound was that he didn't want to reproduce. But then and that's then inherently she, tied oh to my, sex. We really need to have that episode <laughs> about consent and safe sex and mm, all that stuff. Because she doesn't know anything about that it. That scene is so disturbing. Anyway, we're off fake relationships. So <laughs> they are a fake relationship. Yeah, they're like yeah. a they're And they actually come to the reality of their relationship through sex. Yes. Mm, yes. Which is interesting. It's you know what I, I like I like it. I think um it, for me, the payoff of an ending also really depends on the height of the point of ritual death. Yeah. So yeah. I, because that's where I'm crying. That's yes, where yes, I'm. Yes. I th- I'm thinking mm. especially about movies and. So you need more intersections than just them being like, "Is this fake or is this not?" There needs to be I more. I think. At stake. I think I don't really mind what's happening at the ending so much if their point of ritual death. That's where it. Where I my breath gets taken yeah. away, where I'm moved, where I'm like, oh my gosh, like you know <laughs> that moment of really like because it's just like oh shit, like maybe there's so yeah. this this vulnerability that you know is about to come down. I'm thinking about 
um, Daisy Jones and the Six, the TV show. Yeah. And I remember watching it and it hit this particular point. To me, that was the point of ritual death. And I sobbed and was just, oh, because I just thought is that that's not, can we, we beautiful. Can we just out it? Is it when she sends him off stage? Yeah. Yeah. And to me, mm-hmm. it was the most beautiful, vulnerable moment where when you love someone's, you know that thing, if you love them, you let them go. And it was this thing where she knew that their love was hurting and it was just this beautiful sacrifice to me. And I was like, oh, my God, how will they ever recover from this? And they don't it's, it's for years. Even, it's not even a sacrifice, though, is it? Because that, that is her moment of loving herself. But both mm. of them. Yeah. She loves herself enough to know, to know she'll be okay, but she loves him enough to let him go like, and let, let him figure that but out. Also and, that's, oh, that's not so love much. he's offering her at no. all. No. No, and that she knew that she recognized that, and so she said, "Well, I can give it back to you. Like I can give you what you need." I and I thought, "God, book, what a beautiful moment!" I thought the book did Camilla and and Billy better. I felt more on Camilla's side in the book, even okay. though I had full sympathy for her in the TV series and loved her. Daisy and Billy were more of a thing in the book, even in the film, even yeah. Whereas in the book, yeah. the love triangle is so intense. Yeah. You don't really know if anything's happening in the book, do you? You don't know if they're actually making no, out and sleeping you don't, together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, there's sti- but you almost... There's question mark, question yeah, mark, Yeah, but question maybe mark. the question marks keep. it And I also more. felt like Camilla was more active. Like she was the one who brought Daisy to the realisation. It mm, wasn't Billy. Yes. Mm. So that was different too. And I do think – but I think that, that for me um, the ending of the TV series is arguably could be seen as quite cheesy, but I didn't care because yeah, that, I thought that – because that, that's not the moment that I carry. It's yeah. the moment of I agree. sacrifice. That, that's really memorable. Also him crying – after when he's in the facing himself in the mirror, yeah, that was. Does that great. make it more of a romance to you, Kathleen? If it them <laughs> coming together at the end a little bit, yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah. that's not in the book. Them no, coming no, no, together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no. But you know it's going to come because the, the daughter says in the interviews, like you know, mum, mum oh, wants you to. Um, but in terms of fake relationships, there is something there about Billy and Daisy kind of having a public fake relationship and yeah, performing yeah, couple yeah, them. Yes. Hugely. See, um, it, it happens it's in like the that celebrity, celebrity thing. Yeah. Yeah. It, there's something about it. We want to see people together. Oh my god, but people not know still anything about it. I don't love, know. We want to project our they fantasies still onto love them. It when like Kate Winslet takes Leo as a date to the Oscars. Yeah. Right? Or like Mindy Kaling and what is oh, it, BJ Novak and everyone's like yeah. they're dating they're their own love, friends. they have two kids. <laughs> like, they did date in real life though for ages, right? <laughs> yeah, but people are like convinced that he's the father of our children. Like, yes, I, know. Like, I don't know if you guys yeah. watch It's Always Sunny in Philly, but I love it. I think it's one of the best shows and the fact that charlie and the waitress are actually a couple is like beautiful. in real life yeah <laughs> yeah yeah even though he's a stalker widow in the show <laughs> but musicians have that following them around all the t- time too like taylor yeah. swift can't even have a friend she can't even have female friendship she's never come out as this year with, with fernando alonso the formula one driver which is hilarious if you haven't looked up um have you guys heard about this no no so you're not sports fans but, but i like <laughs> f1 i like daniel yeah. ricardo <laughs> yeah, yeah everyone loves danny um but so fernando alonso there was one rumor about him dating Taylor Swift and it just went viral. Oh my God. Oh, it was so nuts. He's so clearly probably not true, but he's divorced and mm. he's like half her height. But it just <laughs> became like this internet thing the weekend of that Grand Prix. Like mm. it was everywhere. And to the point, even the commentators on the race were working in all these Taylor Swift song references. Oh, and that's it's just funny. like the level of how much we love the idea of celebrity relationships. Yeah. yeah. Well, I would like, love to read more books about celebrity relationships, to be fair, like where. Like why they're doing it, whether they like each other. Like there was so much speculation <laughs> about <laughs> Harry Styles and Olivia Wilde. Like, but maybe that's also because Harry Styles fans are like delusional. A little oh bit. yeah, and, and they're like, like we're we not don't together. Like her. Oh gosh, George, yeah. you said that. You said that on air. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm a Harry Styles fan, so I'm I'm admitting to my own delusion. <laughs> but like, yeah, you, 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 you have like, asked him to marry you what three <laughs> times on this podcast? No, I would you even like? No. Would you like anyone he was with? Yeah, well, that's what I was going to say. I don't think any – there's something about Harry Styles fans where they're like, he can't be with poor Harry. anyone. Well, that's like – and the same thing with what Justin Bieber and Selena Gomez, how they dated oh, yeah. a century ago yeah. and he's married and his wife – and look, they, they there's a lot there that you could comment on and I'm not going into details there. But the fact is is that his wife 
gets like, targeted. And, and yeah. Selena gets dragged into their relationship. Oh, they, oh yeah, because no, no. they're like, they're the <laughs> ultimate relationship and Hayley and Justin are like, you know, wrong together. So there's something here and, about, yes. um, I think Crazy. that does tie back to our topic today about I. Idealizing relationships, yeah. yeah. That with Hugely. the fake relationship, you're performing an ideal version of a relationship. Yeah. Like I want to go to this wedding back home, and I don't want to be single, so I'm going to get a hot guy that everyone will be like, "Wow, mm. look what she's." Yeah, I'm projecting doing. what I think everybody else wants. Yeah, yeah. And then maybe discovering what I really want along the way. Yeah. yeah. So a lot of those reality show romances do fake dating things too. Oh, you know what? When mm. you first brought up, when you first asked us about things, I was going to ask if you guys think The Bachelor fits. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh. Fake dating? Yeah, because oh. to me there is an element of, of, of it. it. Of course. Yeah. yeah. Scripted reality, right? Because I feel like when you meet people, you kind of know which one you want to explore stuff with. So he's just kind of like... Fluffing around until he and it's also until not, he's able to pick her, and it's also not fake dating at the same time because some of them now are like married and have kids and stuff. So like yeah. you know, it's not fake. That's, yeah, but yeah, it's yeah. fake for some people. But for some people yeah. on there, they're there for their whatever their Instagram but then let's this. Face and it, hooking up on Tinder can be fake dating. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like all the catfishes out there. True, true. Like how often are we? Like when we have mm. those masks on and we're pretending, or if we're just looking for a hookup and we tell, yeah. like, or uh, people who ghost you, I mean, yeah, that's kind of fake. <laughs> or love bomb you. Oh, yeah. Well, that that's not real at all, is it? Yeah, like love bombing, telling someone what they want to hear to get what they want, and then going away. Mm. I guess that's a little bit different than fake dating, but it's being fake. It's fake. Yeah, it's being fake. Oh, so there we go. Being fake versus being fake, fake dating. Versus fake dating. <laughs> because. Why would you do that for someone? Like in a romance, if you're fake mm. dating, why would you be someone's fake date? It would depend on the circumstance, I yeah, guess. Yeah, what are some of the ones that come up? Because I want to help them because I like already – I'm in love with them. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah like already like – One side them. is an unrequited yeah, sort of thing. that makes yeah. sense to me. That's kind of melty. Or if there's like a mutual thing like is in the proposal, as we've said, like they both get something out of it. Mm. At the end, work wise or career wise, or yeah, I mean, in Pretty Woman, like he gets stuff for his career, but she also gets paid for a whole week. Yeah, so it's and like she can survival. stop being a prostitute. That's the thing that gets yeah. her out yeah. of it. Yeah, so there's definitely like that element, and that's it, and it works the same way in the I Kiss Quotient, right? I rewatched that recently, and mm. it's a lot better than I was expecting. I really like Pretty Woman. Yeah, because I was <laughs> expecting the politics would be terrible, mm. but actually, it holds up pretty well because they do deal with trauma. Yeah. And they do deal with the way she's been treated and the economics of it mm. and it actually is quite well done. That's when she good. slaps the guy at the um, polo game or whatever it is, oh. does she slap him? But I he think? beats her up, remember? Yeah. At the end. <sighs> like it's quite intense and Julie Roberts has that line about, do they teach you that in school exactly where to hit a woman so it really hurts? Yeah. Like there's all of oh. this, there's a lot going on yeah. there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do. I also like Julia Roberts. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> she's she particularly fabulous in that one. Like yes, really good. The other fake dating kind of one is, and I cannot remember the name of it, but with Kevin Klein, you mm. know that's based. Do you know this one? It was based on mm. on um, I can't think of anyone's names. Tom Hanks's Oscar speech. Did you hear about this? So when no. Tom Hanks won the Oscar, he gave oh. a for Philadelphia, where he played a, a gay man with AIDS. He is such an <laughs> '80s thing, right? Let's hire Tom Hanks for that role. With Den- <laughs> I think it was Denzel Washington, might have been his. No, it was Antonio Banderas was his gay lover. Let's get the straightest, most masculine guys. Is there anything Tom Hanks didn't do in that? (laughs) (laughs) So anyway, he's giving his Oscar speech and he thanks his high school drama teacher um, who was gay and was so brave, but the guy had never come out. Jesus. And it outed oh. him to the whole school. Oh, this is tickling my yeah. This is tickling my mind now that you're yeah. saying it. Yeah. So it just it was an awful moment, and then they made this movie with Kevin Klein and Tom Selleck. And yeah, Kevin Klein is it in it? No, not oh, in and out. In and out. In and out. Yeah. The friends and family of Howard, a popular teacher, are shocked when one of his students announces that he is gay. Howard then tries his best to prove that he is heterosexual. Can I just say, I'm so glad I remembered that before you found (laughs) it. Like, that feels like an achievement. So this isn't really a fake, like, consciously fake dating thing, but he's marrying Joan Cusack. And it takes him the whole film to realise, to come out as gay and to break off the thing. But it's fine because Matt Dillon turns up and he's been a student of Joan Cusack's. Mm. He's been in love with her forever. And actually, I think he's the actor. 
that outs him and he ends up marrying the jilted woman. But there are like mm. all these iterations of people lying to themselves, lying to each other. Well, the fake relationship becomes a form of protection for minority communities. Mm. I think that's even... That's true. I think that fake dating kind of comes up a lot in in romances where they're not white as well, where there's like family dynamics that, you know... Like Southeast Asian communities. Yeah, there are a lot of English, exactly. English shows like yeah. that, I think. Also... Um, is in Regency, Regency oh. romances, Anna Campbell, I know the Australian author Anna Campbell has one where she marries um, her gay friend who needs a wife in the mm. Regency and she doesn't want to get married and so they have a marriage of convenience where they are never going to be a couple. So the fake relationship means she's already married to this gay guy so she can't marry the hero. Yeah, because marriage of convenience mm. does play with the fake dating, yeah, it doesn't does. it? Yeah, yeah. It's very mm. anyway. We love a little bit of fake uh, dating, and we're <laughs> going to come back next week, and we're going to have a book club next week. So I hope you're reading madly, and you've probably already read it anyway. So rereading madly, but we're looking at Emily Henry's Happy Place. If you can hear thuds, that's me moving the book around. <laughs> um, but what we'll do is we'll go through all the topics that we've done. Yeah, this we month. might actually make it through all of them. Yeah, we'll, <laughs> yeah, I feel like we'll, we'll make sure we we'll keep see how too. we go. I'm hosting it, so let's <laughs> see. The challenge is on me to see if so, I can get us there. Get reading on Happy Place if you haven't read it already. Emily Henry, Happy Place. And we're going to be looking at the point of ritual death, vacation romance and fake dating and just discuss this uh, amazingly popular book that's on the New York Times bestseller list. Mm -hmm. So, Yay. And I love Emily Henry in general. <laughs> we all love her writing. It's so good. <laughs> anyway, we will see you next week um, and come join us in a very happy place. See you. Bye. 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 Love this podcast? Support it and sponsor today. Simply head to oscastnetwork.com for details.